Good morning. Let us pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us take a moment to acknowledge our sin, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Isaac grew, and on the day of the child's weaning, Abraham held a great feast. Sarah noticed the son whom Hagar, the Egyptian, had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she demanded of Abraham, drive out that slave and her son. No son of that slave is going to share the inheritance with my son, Isaac. Abraham was greatly distressed, especially on account of his son, Ishmael. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed about the boy or about your slave woman. Heed the demands of Sarah, no matter what she is asking of you. For it is through Isaac that descendants shall bear your name. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a great nation of him also, since he too is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham got some bread and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. Then placing the child on her back, he sent her away. As she roamed aimlessly in the wilderness of Beersheba, the water in the skin was used up. So she put the child down under a shrub, and then went and sat down opposite him, about a bow shot away. For she said to herself, Let me not watch to see the child die. As she sat opposite Ishmael, he began to cry. God heard the boy's cry, and God's messenger called to Hagar from heaven. What is the matter, Hagar? Don't be afraid. God has heard the boy's cry in, his, in this plight of his. Arise, lift up the boy, and hold him by the hand, for I will make of him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water, and then let the boy drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for naught is lacking to those who fear him. The great grow poor and hungry, but those who seek the Lord want for no good thing. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Come, children, hear me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and takes delight in prosperous days? The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia. 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 The Father willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruit for his creatures. Alleluia. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came to the territory of the Gardenians, two demonics were coming from the tomb to meet him. They were so savage that no one could travel by that road. They cried out, What have you to do with us, Son of God? Have you come to torment us before the appointed time? Some distance away, a herd of many swine were feeding. The Nevins pleaded with him, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go then. They came out and entered the swine, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea, where they drowned. The swine herders ran away, and when they came to the town, they reported everything, including what had happened to the demonics. Thereupon the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their district. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the days that I'm dreading that will come up, and I'm not sure how soon it'll come up, is the day that I have to go to my cell phone provider and get a new phone. <laughs> I am quite used to the phone that I have right now. I'm finally figuring out how to manage it and work my way around it. And it always is such a challenge to get a new phone and trying to figure that out and trying to get comfortable with it. I've had that same experience this past year here in the parish. We've been using a new uh, software and talking about moving all of our calendars. I am used to the calendar online that I use. I remember the challenge that I had moving from my book calendar to an online calendar and now changing a different kind of calendar. Right now, I have three calendars that pop up on my phone. <laughs> Doing something new like that I get comfortable, I know that technology can make things easier, but there's always that challenge up front. And I also know that as I learn something new, it's not the last time I'm gonna to have to do that. The change is a part of life, and it's a constant that we're called to. And in many ways, in our spiritual life, we are called constantly to change, to a deeper relationship and understanding of that relationship. And at times, the Lord calls us to make changes that we're not always wanting to make. We hear in the gospel at the end, the people who hear about this incredible thing that Jesus does, begs them to leave. They recognize with such great power, something new, some kind of new authority was going to defend something new of them. And they want him to go. They got used, even with the demonics, they couldn't go on that road, they got used to the detour. They got used to adjusting their life to the way that it was. And we can get used to sin in our life, we can get used to some of our bad habits, we can get used to the things that go on that aren't completely life within us. But the Lord calls us to something new and something greater. And we can trust that if he is calling us to that, he'll give us what we need to accomplish it. We need not fear what the Lord desires for us. But as we surrender and hand ourselves over, incredible things can happen. As we come to the Eucharist today to begin our day, to be nourished by him, let us pray that we welcome that power into our life, that we not fear any changes the Lord desires for us to make, but turn ourselves over to that fuller life that he wants for us. Let us pray. For bishops, priests, and deacons, may God provide them with strength and courage in leading his people in the ways of truth. Let us pray to the Lord. For world leaders, may God deliver them from any lust of power and inspire them in working for lasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the homeless, may God provide safe shelter and the support of loving brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our community here, may God enable us to be the hands, feet, and voice of the Son, Jesus. 
reaching out to a wounded world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the faithfully departed, and we remember especially Catherine Paprocki, for whom this Mass is offered, for Will Hanna, who will be buried tomorrow, for Pete Petrini, whose funeral will be Monday. As they walked with Christ in this life, May he bless them with everlasting joy in the next. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pause to add our own personal needs and intentions and the prayers written in the petition book here in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord Lord our God, we come before you in faith. Hear these prayers, give answer according to your will. We offer them to Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who wants to establish these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O oh God, who will that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, to so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen.